Essential oils are spiritually neutral, and the Bible is filled with positive accounts of God directing the use of distilled oils. That's different than essential oils, but it's from God's creation of plants and flowers. I use oils myself for fragrance. I make my own skincare with oils, and also I use them for cleaning my house because I don't like chemicals. However, today I wanted to talk with you about the idolatry that some people turn to with essential oils. First, to look at the screen at uh, some of these witchcraft spells that involve using oils. Here are oils that are being sold for breaking up with someone. A lot of oils that are about being a money magnet, call money oil. Here's a beauty spell oil, a love spell. Lots and lots of oils used in witchcraft. And so that would be an example of oils being used in a way that's not biblical as an idol. Whenever we think that some object, even something that God created, like a crystal or the oils that come from God's flowers, whenever we think that those items have their own magical powers apart from God, and we have those items on the throne of our heart instead of God, we have made an idol, and the Bible calls out idolatry. In fact, in the book of Revelation, chapters 21 and 22, we read that idolaters and sorcerers will not be in the new heaven, but will be cast into the lake of fire, which is hell. So this is very serious to make sure that we're not engaged in idolatry, and if we are, to repent. In the same way as the witchcraft spells that use oils that we just saw, we can take a look at a multi-level marketing company like Young Living that sells essential oils and look at their page for this little vial of oil that's called Abundance Essential Oil. It's a mixture. It says, these oils were used by ancient cultures to attract prosperity and magnify joy and peace. So they are essentially selling witchcraft spell oil here. And this little half ounce bottle of oil, by the way, costs $56.25 US. Oh, but if you're a loyalty member, you can get a discount for $42.75. And I know that Young Living has their spiel that their oils are high quality and certified, but I'd like you to see this if you're not aware of this. Young Living Oils was started by a man named Donald Gary Young. He went by D. Gary or Gary Young. He was a Mormon in Utah, and he had been arrested for practicing medicine without a license and had a questionable background and education about doing medical treatments without a license. He had an employee named David Sterling at Young Living who decided to jump ship and create his own um, multi-level marketing modeling after Young Living, and he called it doTERRA. And like Gary Young, David Sterling is a Mormon. They're both based very close to each other in Utah. Uh, these companies are not run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but the CEOs are Mormon. So doTERRA, like Young Living has made up its own certification process. And I'll attach an article to this video so you can read it yourself. It's very um, shocking. doTERRA says that all of their oils are certified pure therapeutic grade. What they fail to tell you is that they created that name, certified pure therapeutic grade. They actually trademark that. And there was a letter from a customer service representative of doTERRA who said that the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, had approved their oils as being certified pure therapeutic grade. Now, they may not be saying FDA anymore, but this is a trademark term that they have. doTERRA owns the right to the trademark certified pure therapeutic grade. So it would be like you making up a certification for yourself and then using it for marketing. And I know that this is a billion dollar industry and some of you who are watching this might actually be Young Living or doTERRA salespeople who get upset when anything is 
at all criticized about these companies, but you need to know this background and pray about it. I did a video with a woman who used to be a young living salesperson under the multi-level marketing, and she complained that the pressure to sell to her friends and the law of attraction, new age teachings to these representatives was interfering with her family. And so she finally quit. For those who think Young Living is a Christian company, um, of course, it's rooted and grounded in LDS Mormonism, which is not Orthodox Biblical Christianity. And you can take a look at this post from the Young Living Instagram account that shows an astrological chart, and it says, which essential oil is meant to be for you? Just ask the stars. Here's another post from Young Living. And it says uh, Zodiac Diffuser Blends. And it says, based on your astrological Zodiac sign, you would either get uh, a blend. And this, again, this is witchcraft. Ambition. They give you a recipe for motivation and three lime. I guess it's drops of those oils. Stardust. Think deeply. Free spirit. Patchouli vanilla tangerine. And this is what they wrote in the post. It says, fill your space with amazing scents inspired by the Zodiac. With Capricorn season ending and Aquarius season approaching, we turn to the traits of these Zodiac signs for stellar blends you'll love. And those who don't know the Bible often argue with me that they say, well, the Magi were astrologers, so it must be okay. Or God made the stars, so it must be okay. Well, first of all, the Magi were wise men, and, and also magi means magician, not astrologer. And secondly, they were following a prophesied star to find the baby Jesus. And this does not say that astrology is okay. Actually, if we look at this verse that's on the screen from Isaiah, it says that astrologers are condemned. And when we look at the book of Daniel, we find that the astrologers are portrayed as bumbling idiots who cannot get the accurate information compared to Daniel, who gets the information correct because he is an appointed prophet of God. So astrology would be in the same category as divination, which is condemned in the Bible. It's one of the reasons that I left the New Age after I was saved uh, by God was because I was practicing divination and I read the Bible verses, both Old and New Testament, that condemn the practice of divination. I'll put those Bible verses on the screen here so you can see them yourself. So here's a letter that I received, and the woman gave me permission to share her letter anonymously, publicly. And she says, I fell into the New Age trap around 2013, and it started with Young Living Essential Oils being sold to me as, these are used in the Bible, so they have to be good for you. Now let's pause for a moment before we go back to her letter and talk about that Young Living has a set of oils that they claim are the oils of the Bible. And this is really deceptive to me because they're playing upon professing Christians who probably haven't studied the oils in the Bible. So God directed the Israelites to use distilled oils, not essential oils, hyssop, olive oil for healing. And then we can see anointing for healing in the New Testament. But that was entirely different than this deceptive, in my opinion, marketing that Young Living is doing about these so-called essential oils of ancient scripture. So look at this. They are marketing frankincense. Now, we all know frankincense is in the Bible, but this is something that's not in the Bible. Young Living is claiming unbiblically, in a New Age way, that frankincense is useful for visualizing. Now, visualizing is not in the Bible. I don't want to hear anyone from who's trying to twist Habakkuk 2-2. That's not visualization. Visualization is conjuring your own will to try to manifest and, and so that's against God's will because God's sovereign and we are commanded and exhorted to trust in the Lord's will, to lean on him and not our own understanding. Their frankincense marketing says that it could improve one's spiritual connection to what? A spiritual connection to a fallen angel, to a demon? We don't want to go around trying to 
improve spiritual connections to any old spirit. We want to test the spirits and we want to be very, very discerning. More new age marketing of their so-called essential oils of ancient scripture is the Rose of Sharon. And their Rose of Sharon marketing says that this oil is helpful for meditating and counseling. Um, chapter and verse, please. Where does it say that? This is something that they made up. This is a example of an idol and not biblical. And this is where we can open a doorway like this woman did uh, once she got involved with Young Living through their saying that their biblical marketing campaign, look at the pain that it caused. The bottom line is that these essential oils are not the distilled oils of the Bible, and they certainly in the Bible were not used for condemned practices such as visualization or trying to connect with some spirit. The way that you Restore your relationship with our Heavenly Father God is through Jesus. We don't randomly try to have some sort of spiritual connection through using essential oils. That would be idolatry. Oils in themselves are neutral. Um, if we make them into witchcraft spells, that's not neutral. That's an idol. So it's how we use it. That's the bottom line. The Bible is very clear that we are to worship only the Creator and not worship or serve His creation such as flowers and plants. It would be like giving all credit to a painting instead of to the artist. It'd be like giving all credit to a song instead of the musician. The flowers and plants that create the oils are God's creations. We are not to worship them. We are to only worship the creator, God. We can appreciate flowers, of course. The Bible talks about using olive oil and hyssop for healing. But we must be aware of idolatry. Idolatry means putting anything above God or thinking that something other than God has the power to heal us. Remember what 1 Corinthians 10.21 says, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. And both 1 Corinthians 10.14 and 1 John 5.21 warn us to flee from idolatry. This is often a matter of Christian liberty where we need to check in with the Holy Spirit through prayer and pray for his conviction if there's anything in our life that has become an idol. I pray that this message and this video has helped you to root out idolatry in your life. Remember, we can't do anything in our own strength. It's always through the strength of Christ. Don't try to use willpower, but instead, Lean on God. Pray for help. Pray for the strength to just say no to idolatry, to flee from idolatry. Thanks so much for watching, and God bless you.